Welcome everybody to this small summary video of Mikai 2020 and today I want to focus on the last day of the main conference on Wednesday, October 7th, 2020 and I selected a couple of papers that I think are really worth showing here. Again, I focus on the posters as in the previous videos and I hope you enjoy this little video here. So let's see what I have for you. So again, this is focusing on the last day of the main conference, that is the October 7th. And the first paper that I want to present today is actually from the CHI community. So this is Computer Assisted Intervention. So the paper is entitled, Can a Handheld Navigation Device Reduce Cognitive Load? A User-Centered Approach Evaluated by 18 Surgeons. It is a paper offered by Caroline Brendel, Laura Schütz, Javier Esteban, Sandro Krieg, Ulrich Eck and Nasir Nawab from Technical University of Munich. And you see that they are focusing very much on the clinical needs. And you can see here that in particular, if you're operating, for example, with an interventional drill, then what happens quite frequently is that you have some additional guidance and it's displayed on a monitor, as you can see here on the left. At the same time, of course, you want to look after your patient. So what happens is that the interventionalists have to look back and forth all the time because they want to have the guidance signal, but they also want to look after the actual operation area. So what the colleagues from Munich propose is some new kind of device. It's an augmented drill and the drill is being tracked with infrared markers and they have this small display that is attached that helps you in order to position the drill accurately such that you can follow the optimal trajectory towards the actual drilling direction. Really interesting paper. They also have a very nice evaluation in the paper. So I really recommend having a look at the video and also the respective paper. The second paper that I want to show today is entitled Combining Fundus Images and Fluorescent Angiography for Artery Vein Classification Using the Hierarchical Vessel Graph Network. And this paper is presented by Su Chan Li and they are from Kukmin University in Korea. So what they want to have here is an analysis of the retinal veins and they are using fundus images here. So here you can see an overlay of the ground truth. And again, the problem is to identify whether the vessel is an artery or a vein. In order to alleviate the problem a little bit, they also use in addition fluorescence and geography. And the nice thing in fluorescence and geography is that you can actually use contrast agent in order to visualize the flow. So this means that you can actually see by several sequences of images at what time, what part of the vessel tree is actually being contrasted. And this allows you to differentiate arteries and veins. So the main idea that they follow is they register the fluorescence and geography images to each other such that they get rid of any possible influences by motion. And they feed that into a feature extractor network. At the same time, they also process a vessel map and the fundus image with a second feature extraction pipeline. And then both of them are combined and they use techniques to extract actually the vessel voxels and build a graph of the actual vessel tree. And this vessel tree is then processed with graph convolutions in a graph unit in order to predict the final artery vein map. So very interesting approach. I can really recommend to have a look at the paper and see the results. And I think this is really a very good method to go ahead to detect arteries and veins in retinal images. 
The next paper that I want to present here is also going more into the CHI direction. So here we are looking at interacting with medical volume data in projective augmented reality. This was presented by Florian Heinich and colleagues and they essentially have a very nice setup where they try to work with augmented reality techniques and they project essentially onto the patient surface the inner workings of the patient. So they use an HTC Vive tracking system for the head tracking. They have two stereoscopic projectors and then they use additional input devices in order to control the entire augmented reality system. So I asked for permission and they actually allowed me to show a small video of what they're doing. So here you can see how the tracking and the overlay works. So you can really look inside of the patient. And then they also have different techniques. Here I'm only showing the hand gestures in order to control the overlay that is projected onto the patient and how it can be adjusted. So you see here windowing in uh, different configurations. Very nice paper. I really recommend to have a look at it. The next paper that I want to present is self-supervised contrastive video speech representation learning for ultrasound. And this was presented by Jiambo Jiao from the University of Oxford. So they propose to use self-supervised representation learning. You may have heard about this technique. This is essentially an unsupervised technique where you learn the representation in a kind of network. This is shown here in the blue trapezoid. And this is done on a pretext task, something where you don't need labels. So you can maybe predict the present from the past, or you can do jigsaw puzzles and all kinds of things for training the network. But you generally try to learn a representation that is able to help in this pretext task, but it's not the actual task that you want to work on. And later you take the information that you have trained in the pretext task and you transfer it to your real application where you then can work with supervised learning. Now, what they are working with is contrastive learning and they show this nice example here where they use images and language. So we have here an image that shows obviously beer and pizza and then they also have a text that is matching and the positive example would be the description pizza and beer and the negative one would be healthy brunch. So now you process the image with a CNN and you convert the language into a corresponding representation. Here they chose GLOF, so the uh, global vector representation for words. And then both of them can be mapped into a feature space and the contrastive learning procedure will try to align the feature vectors of the corresponding samples to be close to each other and at the same time, the negative ones to be apart from the other representation. Now, they are not working with the example from computer vision here, but they are working with ultrasound and video speech. So here they recorded the speech of a physician working on the ultrasound device, and they recorded the image data in conjunction with the speech data. And this gives you a very nice database where you have images and speech. And then they apply the contrastive learning technique. So you can see that you then have aligned images and speech signals, and you try to match them again in some embedding space such that the signals that occur at the same time are mapped together, while signals that occur at a different time are mapped into a different position. So you can do that with a contrastive learning procedure. And this is a really interesting application and a really interesting idea. And I really recommend to have a look at the paper and see at the results. The last paper that I want to present today is X to teeth. And the idea is to reconstruct 3D teeth reconstructions from a single panoramic radiograph. It was presented by Yuan Liang, a PhD candidate from University of California, Los Angeles. So they are looking into dental applications. What you would like to have ideally for 
many applications, a multi-purpose tool would be Combeam Computer Tomography. This is 3D, has essentially a lot of information. The cost is unfortunately a bit high. Popularity is not so high because the devices are rather costly and they also are associated with high radiation dose, but you could do implant planning and orthodontics with it. Now, what is much more common are panoramic x-rays that you can see here on the bottom right. They are in 2D, are low cost, very popular and have a low radiation dose. Unfortunately, you can't do implant planning with them. So they try to come up with an idea how to extract the relevant information from these planar panoramic x-ray images. And here is what they did. So they take the image, process it with a feature extraction network, the XNet encoder decoder feature extraction module. And then they have two different networks, one for the reconstruction that produces then from patches that have been generated from the feature extracting module, a 3D reconstruction of the individual tooth. And in order to find those tooth in the image, they have a segmentation module that is able to identify the different teeth inside of the 2D image. So in total, the entire system can be trained then for the entire application in order to do the alignment properly, because you're missing really the 3D information, you need to have a prior that is this estimated arch curve. And with the arch curve, you're then able to align the teeth in a 3D fashion. So I found that a very interesting result that you can produce from a single 2D image, a complete 3D reconstruction of your dental status really cool paper. Please have a look at it in more detail. Then I already come almost to the end of this video. One more thing that I'm very excited about is the Young Researcher Awards on Mikai 2020. I'm kind of excited that one of the papers that I actually presented here in this small video is actually yesterday, the Ultra to Speech paper where you had this ultrasound probe that was attached to the jaw in order to produce speech signals, actually was awarded the Young Scientist Award. And I'm also super happy that Katharina Breininger, one PhD student of our team, won also one of these very prestigious awards. So congratulations to all of the winners, Katharina, Pratmit, Luzang, and Niels Eckstein. Great work. This is really outstanding research. Congratulations. And one last anecdote I would like to share here is that we even made it to the closing ceremony. So one of the screenshots of these videos here actually was presented on the social media slides. So I'm very happy that we could be shown there. So it seems that these videos have been quite interesting and a couple of people have been watching them. So I'm very glad about this. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed them. I will also link the other two videos on Monday and Tuesday, where I've been showing a couple of more papers in the description of this video. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. And maybe we see even in person on one of the next Mikais. So looking forward to meet you there.